Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the process of this painting of Lilia from League of Legends. So I realized that it's been a while since I've done a walkthrough of one of my more finished illustrations and since I saw the teaser for Lilia, I really really wanted to make fan art of her. She reminded me a lot of some of the Doe characters that I like a uh, Doe Fawn whatever girls that I drew for Inktober last year so and the color scheme was also really really up my alley so I decided to make a fan art of her and I recorded the entire process. So I'm just gonna jump straight into the process and as you can see I started the drawing digitally in Photoshop. Um, I do this pretty frequently with more detailed pieces because it's a lot easier to keep track of the composition digitally and move around elements if I like and it, it's basically a time-saving tactic and I later on am going to use a light box to transfer the sketch over on watercolor paper. But yeah, as you can see in this step right here, I'm just figuring out the main elements and I do flip the canvas back and forth a bunch of times just to make sure that it looks good both ways. Sometimes it's a really good way to catch some mistakes, especially in the face. Like um, drawing a straight on angle like that where it's supposed to be obviously um, parallel or wait, what's the word? Uh, symmetrical i have a hard time doing that sometimes i always end up with like one eye higher than the other or something like that so photoshop is also super useful to just quickly move around facial features to get the under drawing right right off the bat so yeah as you can see i'm just quickly jotting down the composition elements and at this point i also decided to do a quick lighting test just to have a better idea in my mind of what I want the lighting in this piece to be like. I I had more of a dark piece in mind at the beginning, uh, lighting wise, uh, but then as you will probably see later obviously <laughs> that it turned out actually a lot lighter and airier than I initially wanted it to. Um, which is something that happens pretty frequently and I kind of like keeping things exciting and not over planning. Over planning is something that really takes the fun out of the piece for me. When I know exactly what it's going to look like from the start, it kind of, I don't know, I guess makes it boring or something. But yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is that what I initially had in mind is pretty different for from what I ended up with in the end. So yeah. At this stage, I've already printed out uh, the sketch onto just regular printer paper. I have like an inkjet printer, black and white printer, and I actually specifically really like using the black and white printer because it it doesn't really it 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 prints in basically the contrast is pretty sharp. And I like it that way because when I use the light box later, it's just easier to see the lines. But anyway, so I'm trying out some new techniques lately, one of which has been using different colored color erase pencils for the line art. Uh, it's been actually working out great. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I have a very limited selection of colors to work with. Uh, last time I bought these pencils, I basically just got like a blue, red, orange, brown, and pink and purple or something and that's about it. So it's not a huge variety of colors to select from, but it actually forces me to kind of think uh, which about which colors are adjacent to the ones that are going to be there. Like for instance, her skin tone is um, a combination of like a beige and brown, but the closest thing I had to that I think was a red pencil. So I used a red pencil for her face and some other elements and then I used and I figured out that I actually did have a brown pencil but so yeah that's kind of a mood point but <laughs> where did it work oh yeah so it worked out for the foliage near the bottom of the painting uh, so I used a blue pencil to outline 
the green foliage and it blended in quite nicely later on as you will see so that was kind of fun but also while i was working on this i did realize that i might want to invest into a nice set of pencils so that i have more colors to choose from because even though it actually works out okay for the line art to only have a few colors to choose from i would really like to have more variety um, for a later step in the painting because as you will see i usually finish off the painting by going back to pencils and just polishing it out and i think i would greatly benefit from from more colors so i was actually thinking of maybe getting like a big polychromo set that a couple of my friends got recently and it looks amazing and there's so many colors to choose from but yeah so as you can see i'm just finishing up the line work here it usually takes me longer to do the character uh i guess maybe in this particular case because it's all organic stuff like petals and trees stuff like that it doesn't have to be too precise if that makes any sense like i can kind of just make up what what it looks like on the spot so i usually do stuff like that a lot faster i actually left a real time segment right here where i wanted to show you guys how quickly i actually do it in real time without the speed up and sometimes when i watch these videos like i get disturbed by how it looks like i'm running some sort of automatic program and my hand is doing these weird robot like motions to do stuff like leaves and flowers but i thought that was kind of funny but anyways yeah so i'm pretty much getting everything in this line art like i'm not omitting a whole lot of stuff and i'm making the line art relatively visible because I decided earlier on that I'm not going to outline it in ink, which is something that I usually do, but recently I've kind of stopped doing that and I think it produces more um, three-dimensional results, which is pretty obvious because usually line work does tend to flatten out an image, especially if it's thicker line work and if it's more strong and pronounced. So yeah, I really like the new direction that I've been taking my paintings into. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just using the blue pencil now to outline the rest of the um, composition. And I'm pretty much almost ready to move on to the next step at this point. So before moving on to the next step, I took off the sketch from below or from the other side of the paper and I did tape down the sheet of paper. By the way, I'm using cold press watercolor. So, or wait, hot. Yeah, hot press is what I'm using. So it's smooth. It's not a textured surface. And I'll talk a little bit later about why, what it, what, how it's different from cold press paper and what I like about it. But yeah, so I taped down the paper to try and avoid buckling because I did um, kind of plan earlier on to cover large amounts of the paper with water, which you will see later. But yeah, taping it down to a flat surface actually helps quite a bit. And I like taping it to the light box and not the table because it's easy to shift the angle of the light box if I feel like I need to because I do like to rotate uh, my piece quite often, uh, the, the paper quite often while I'm working. But anyway, so as you can see in this step, I'm just using some masking fluid to mask out a bunch of the flowers and some other elements that I want to remain white for the time being. This particular masking fluid I got from the Hey Kala art box that I ordered a couple of months ago. I really like all the stuff that came in it and I actually used the inks as well for this piece. I'm not gonna get into the details of what kind of material she has in it because you can easily find a video here on YouTube um, going through all the materials in detail, but the specific mask uh, masking fluid is it's called Mask Pen. I'm gonna probably uh, put in like a text version into the video so you guys can see how it's spelled out. But 
So far, this has been the only masking fluid that I actually want to use. I've bought masking fluid a couple of times before, just like a regular one I found at my local art store. Uh, I know the general idea behind it and I thought that it's a really cool thing to use and might be potentially very helpful to achieve certain looks, but every time I've tried to use masking fluid in the past, I just found it really hard to control it and a lot of the times the, the, the texture of the fluid itself was kind of like either too runny or too thick or dried up too quickly and it ruined a ton of brushes and I found it really difficult to be precise. So I ended up just basically never using it. But when I tried this one, it's got this special applicator that um, you guys probably saw me just using just now that is super helpful with precision. So I love it. Anyways, moving on. As you can see, I kind of got stuck on the masking fluid topic, but here I'm already putting down some basic um, under uh, underwash. I don't know what the I don't even know if that's a word or if that's a term. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, basically just like putting down some base tones and then making uh, bit working from light to dark is what I decided to do here and here I'm already removing some of the masking fluid because I just want to see like I get really impatient and sometimes uh, maybe I should have kept it on to put some more layers or something on the lantern but I decided to just remove it to see what it looks like and I was super happy with the result as you can see it is very pre precise and the shape that I wanted to cover is exactly what got masked out i mean it's a little sloppier with the leaves because i was just rushing but overall it does its job super well so i totally recommend this particular uh packaging or whatever that it comes in it's super useful anyways so after i remove this masking fluid uh since i kind of did like a basic lighting test in photoshop i still don't really know exactly what I want the piece to look like in the end. So this is kind of an experimental stage where I just decided to put down some light washes on the top to see what it, what it looks like. And as you can see, I'm kind of leaving out some of the lighter areas in the flowers, just keeping in mind that the light, the main light source here is the lantern that she's holding. So yeah, um, at this point I'm just putting down another wash and so basically my general technique when it comes to ink, this is all ink by the way, it's just colored ink and I believe this particular one that I'm using, the, the purple, the purple one is a Dr. Martin's, um, just India ink, I think it is, uh, in purple, most likely. <laughs> I'll look it up later. I'll probably list it. Uh, I'll list all the materials that I used in the description below if you guys are curious about the specifics. But anyways, so this is one of my favorite parts of the painting process that I'm currently using is I just go straight into lighting before putting down any base colors. So I'm... I, here what I did was I just took a bunch of the ink, like I took a little bit of the ink and a bunch of water and I diluted it to a pretty light tone as you can see so that I could slowly work um, my way towards the darkest areas while keeping the lighter areas free from ink. So I could have probably masked some things out but the reason why I mask out certain areas and not others is because this, uh, the way that I like to do lighting is not texture heavy. So I, I don't use the water or, or the ink texture, like the, the beautiful ink splatters and splotches that form naturally w with big washes. I don't use that to my benefit, unlike with the outer edges of the painting i want the focal point which is the character to be more neat and um i guess more smoothly rendered than the outer areas of the painting where i like to make things look a little bit washed out so i don't need to mask out the light areas because they're very easy to just avoid with the brush because i go pretty slowly like i i just work my way up to the darker parts of the painting very slowly so 
it's it's easy not to use masking fluid for stuff like this and as you can see here i've already I, i've basically finished putting down the main lighting impression if if that makes any sense so after i finish this step it's it's pretty easy for me to see what needs a little more darkness and what needs to be left alone decisively etc the reason why i have to do i have to put in a bunch more work into the lighting after this even though it looks like already pretty discernible is because when you put color well, well when i put colors down later on in the process they actually tend to cover up a lot of this light uh, lighting wash so i have to make lighting more intense in order for it to remain visible underneath the layer of color that's going to come next uh, that's something i've just noticed from previous experience working with this method so even though it is kind of risky and it's difficult uh, to to use this method but the more work you put into the lighting in the beginning the easier it is, the easier it will be later i find it's it's kind of hard for me to work with colors first because it it kind of just turns into a mess and i find that using one color as for for the shadows uh, it kind of just ties everything together later on because it will be an undertone in all the different colors that I'm going to be using for the local color for different elements later on. But yeah, so at this point I am already putting some colors in and I decided to start with the background. And I had to think a little bit about... See, where it gets tricky with me sometimes is I'm not very good... Like, I don't know much about color theory. And sometimes i found that if i just simply stick to what color something is supposed to be it turns into a mess so i put in a little bit of thought and decided that i want to use blue pretty prominently so that the green uh the the foliage below like on the bottom portion of the painting doesn't stand out too much uh, obviously, I wanted to have some warmth, but I, I decided to use a lot of blue there as well. And plus, that helped melt away the line art that I did with the colored pencil previously. And as you can see, I'm also fading the painting out towards the edges. I really like um, that look of certain elements being really, really tight and heavily rendered, and others being super washed out and the that i find that's really where the medium kind of shines and even though i can the way that i can render with ink on paper can often mimic like a digital painting type of look pretty uh pretty well i find that it's useful in certain areas of the painting but not in others because at the end of the day if i'm just gonna make it look like a digital painting why not just do it digitally so i really like to kind of show off the special mm, qualities of the materials that i'm using in some por portions of the painting at least if that makes any sense and one of the things that i like about this uh hot press paper the smooth paper is that it takes a little bit longer to dry and so it it's easier to blend to make like the smooth gradients in the shadows like you get what i'm saying right to, to just blend elements and make everything look more smooth it's a lot easier to do it on cold press paper i find oh, sorry hot press i always mix them up the smooth one without texture so that this is the smooth paper without texture um anyway so at this point i am putting down the local colors into the different elements of the character so obviously um i just finished putting down the pink into the hair and i just mixed together a nice reddish brown to color her ears and her skin so i had to be pretty careful with this because i was using a 3d model turnaround as a reference and i noticed that the color scheme i mean they made it look really beautiful in the trailer, but when you look at just the model, the color scheme wasn't my favorite thing. It was kind of 
uh, I don't know. I didn't like how the green contrasted with the pink. I generally don't like green next to pink. I think it looks kind of weird. So I had to be really careful in what hues, like what what kind of colors I choose. So I guess I haven't gotten to the green in this part of the video yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I, again, like, like I did with the foliage down below, I mixed a lot of blue into it. So I found that that worked much better than if I used a warmer green, but I did add a little bit of warmth to where the lit, for where the light areas are, which I think was a good call. And I added more blue in the shadowy areas. So I suppose that's some color theory. I don't know exactly what it, what that's called, uh, what that's called. But usually, uh, I suppose shadowy areas have a more cool tone, uh, and lit areas have a warmer tone. But I think that does depend on the light source. So I guess in this particular case, since I used yellow around the orb, it is a warm light source. So. I put in yellow on some of the highlights on the character as well, just to kind of give it that warmth effect. So yeah, at this point I'm just defining the shape of the lantern and I I actually left the staff until later on in the process because I really wasn't sure which color to paint it. Because I know that in the turnaround that I was using as a reference, it was brown, I believe. But I thought in this drawing, it might not look very good if I use brown, because then it'll just look like it's part of her body. And so I decided to use black and used brown toward the highlights on the staff. And this was kind of a quick decision, and I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but it actually ended up working really well. Uh, hilariously enough, one of my favorite parts of this painting ended up being the staff. I think I was pretty successful with capturing the texture of it, and I'm super happy with how it turned out. Because usually I will put the most focus into the character and the face more specifically, which obviously I did here as usual, but uh, in this case I really, really tried to make the staff look really nice as well and I think it worked out which was a win <laughs> for me for sure but yeah so I I actually used like a pretty medium sized brush up until this point I think except for the smaller details like the eyes but now I'm kind of going more into the detailed area so as you can see I'm just adding some little things here and there with a smaller brush and I think think for the lantern yeah so when I was painting the lantern that's the one place where I used I pulled up my synchromatic watercolors by PH Dr. Martens so the reason why I pulled them out is because they are significantly brighter and I noticed as while I was working on this painting I noticed that it looked kind of washed out so as you can see I just added some extra color to the hair and that is also the watercolors because they're just so much more vibrant and I learned recently from a very helpful subscriber here on YouTube that in terms of their properties, they're not the most long lasting colors. So I wanted to kind of shy away, like steer away from using them because the longevity of a painting is important to me. But I did use them in some parts of it because I just thought it really needed that super bright pop in certain areas but I did use colored ink in the majority of this painting and the color ink that I used was from the Heikala art box that she puts together. It's actually pretty similar to some other colored ink I've used before so I don't think there's anything particularly special about it but it's nice and um, I do like it. One of the things I actually like a lot about it is uh, the packaging so that there's a little pipette that it comes with like a, to dispense and it's on an angle too actually so it makes it super easy to just get it out of the bottles which is something that Windsor and Newton ink does not have but I guess maybe it's because it's for made for different purposes or something but anyways I'm going off on a tangent here so yeah at this point I've put down all the colors and I'm pretty much done with using paint um, I mean ink and 
this is usually the last step for me where I get my colored pencils out again, the same ones that I use for line art, and I just define the little, little details, and sometimes I use it, it's basically just rendering, either adding in gradients of color to tie the colors together, and just kind of blend things all over so that it looks more cohesive and that it really well works out well because like for instance as you can see here I'm using this blue color race pencil for uh, de further defining the shadowy areas and because I use the same color to do that all over the piece it really brings brings everything together and kind of ties it together neatly I find so yeah and I noticed also that the blue, the lighter blue pencil that I was using earlier to add some, to add to the edges of her hair, to the ends of her hair, sorry, it, it actually draws over the darker parts of the ink, which is really cool. That's something I've never really noticed before, but I think this is another reason why I want to get a bigger set of those pencils so that I can use it to add in some, bring back some light, lighter, like rim light or something like that. I noticed that I could actually potentially do that if I have more variety of colors to select from but anyways we're pretty much at the end of the traditional portion of this painting which in this particular case I actually pretty much brought it to completion uh, on paper I usually try my best to make it as finished as I possibly can on paper so that I have to do minimal digital corrections and I think this is the most successful painting I've ever done in terms of that because sometimes it just looks still kind of unfinished even though I did my best and before I move on to uh, correcting it digitally but I think that was actually because I did line art and now that I'm doing it without line art I find it a lot easier to make it look better and more complete for some reason. <laughs> So yeah, uh, now I have already scanned it and I had to make two different scans and there's a super handy thing in Photoshop actually where you, if you go to, I think it's like edit or file automate photo merge. So the photo merge tool allows you to seamlessly merge two scans, which I 100% recommend to people. I didn't even know that this existed until like several months ago and it completely shattered my world because every time I actually specifically stuck to smaller papers so that I could scan them later because I could never merge two scans properly when I did it manually but now that I know that Photoshop can actually do it for you I am like my life has been changed <laughs> anyways so yeah as you can see I just cropped it out and the raw scan was pretty pale so usually I will do several different steps like I'll fix the levels to bump up the highlights and make the darks a little bit darker and then sometimes I use curves as well and then after I'm done doing that I will usually correct the colors as well so I'll use color balance uh, I'll usually bump up the reds or I don't know it, it really depends on the painting in this particular case I, I think I bumped up some other colors as well but I will just slowly work toward it looking pretty much like it does in person because when you do scan it, it it never looks anything like the actual drawing but yeah so um after i corrected the colors with the tools i just sometimes dodge and burn some parts of the painting in this one in this one in particular the dodge tool really helped bring out the light inside the lantern uh, so that worked out pretty well and basically the last step is just a tiny tiny polishing where I pick a traditional looking brush in this case well in every case I usually use the rough pastel from uh, the Photoshop uh, I think it comes with Photoshop anyways it's called rough pastel so I use that brush and I just use it to polish out some of the rougher looking um, parts of the painting and I usually focus on the character and kind of like fan out the details the, so the more 
th the most detail is at the focal point, which is the face. And then as you get further away from that, it gets more general. So that's usually a pretty good way of going about it for me because I used to have this issue where I would always kind of paint out all the details as much as I can in every part of the painting and it kind of made it look too uniform and it was lacking in this life if that makes any sense I always got that feedback from my dad anyways like anytime I showed him and my artwork he would always point out the same thing so it took me years to shake this habit and I think I finally arrived at a point where I can leave some areas alone without over detailing them to death and I think it actually creates a much more effective end result so yeah I was also obviously put some extra work into the staff because I was quite proud of it and I wanted it to be the second star of the show <laughs> And yeah, at this point, it's pretty much done. I'm just putting in some tiny little finishing touches. And and then I believe after I paint in the highlights and... Oh yeah, I decided to knock back this one part of the hair because it was bothering me. And I do think it was pretty effective to do that. So yeah, and after this, I, I, I usually leave behind... Up the the previous layer so just in case I go too hard on the dodge and burn in some areas I like to zoom out look at it and then some parts that I felt were over dodged or overdone with the burn I just kind of erase them so that you can see the previous previous layer uh, that was untouched so that's basically what I was doing there and that is it I'm I'm done at this point and I'm pretty much ready to post it or make a print of it. And yeah, so that's pretty much the entire process of this drawing. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching it. I hope you found it helpful. And I will sometimes be making videos like this in the future. And I'll also make the real-time sketching videos as well. So I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!